the Holstadt culture was a uh, predominantly agricultural early Celtic society that existed in Central Europe. Uh, they practiced agriculture, of course, and they also practiced some metalworking. Uh, now we will be exploring the autosomal DNA results and predicted phenotype and traits of one individual belonging to this culture from actually from Czechia. So that would be on the very east of this map right here. But yes, uh, the Hallstatt culture spread all the way from France to like Eastern Europe, basically. And all of these regions, it, in theory, would be inhabited by Celtic people. So... First, we're going to start with her mitochondrial lineage because it's a girl. She doesn't have a Y DNA. Her mitochondrial lineage is T1A1. And um, uh, for the Y DNA, she does not have one. She's a female. Now, in terms of what she scores for the ethnic calculator results, we're going to look at the ethnic calculator results with my trait predictor. And then we're going to look at uh, then we're going to look at uh, GD match. So first, we're going to start with trait predictor. Here, she's closest to Slavic mercenary from Chimera. Followed by Finnish, followed by Russian, followed by Kiev and Rus, followed by Funnel Beakers, then Bell Beakers, then British. Very interesting. So she's quite Eastern European uh, with the result here, with my trade predictor. And that's going to be very different from the result with Eurogenski 15, because here she is closest to West Germans. Uh, still Northern European, still the north of Europe, but just a different side of the north of Europe. And but followed by West Germans are South Dutch then French, then Austrians, then East Germans, then Southeast English, then North Germans, then Southwest English. So she is quite Western European in her ancestry. And in fact, if we look at her results with um, with G25, you know, her coordinates, if you compare her to other Western Europeans, you will see that she's actually even more farmer. She has more of the farmer ancestry and more of the Western hunter-gatherer ancestry as well than the other Western Europeans. So, for example, comparing her with French from Brittany, which I thought would be close to her because look at her oracle with Eurogenes K13. I mean, it's West German, South Dutch, French. I thought that Brittany, French from Brittany, would be close to her. But if you look at the result, you will see that uh, she is quite different from French from Brittany. Uh, Look at that, she's scoring 15.8% Western Hunter Gatherer, whereas French from Brittany scores 13.8. And she also has much less of the Yamnayan admixture than French from Brittany. So once again, she's quite uh, quite different from the French and the, the even the Western Europeans. She's more of a it looks like she has a Basque shift or a shift towards the like Iberian and Basque people relative to even French people relative to even Dutch and French she has a very southern shift uh, let's go ahead and look what she uh, and see what she looks like let's look at the Nashakot calculator results let's see what phenotype she might have had it looks like she's got blue eyes very interesting so this is one of the higher highest scores for blue eyes I've seen uh, it's kind of uncommon to see 64% likelihood of blue eyes with my trade predictor. I don't see that often, but it looks like she's got blue eyes. It looks like she's got dark blonde hair. Although light blonde or light brown hair is also possible, of course. Uh, most likely she has dark blonde hair. It looks like she's got white skin. Although olive or Mediterranean skin is also quite possible. Palest skin is also sort of possible. Most likely her skin tone is white. And hair texture, most likely she's got wavy or straight hair. Okay. Uh, she does not have blue eye alpha type 3. She does have blue eye alpha type 2 and 1. And she's also heterozygous for blue eye alpha type 4. Very interesting. It's kind of really uncommon. It's unusual to see that, actually. I usually, I usually talk about that, but it's in this case, uh, I kind of move past this, talking about this stuff. You know, my channel evolves. I talk about stuff I don't talk I didn't talk about previously and I stopped talking about things I used to talk about before. Uh it looks like she's got heterozygous genotype in this edition of Tyr, which is once again very interesting, also kind of uncommon. Uh, all right, and she does not have any light color variants in MC1R, so she does not have a predisposition to being ginger. Let's see her score with the phenotype oracle. The closest phenotypes to her are 
uh, this, very interesting, followed by this, uh, and f that followed by this. So all quite white, uh, European white, white phenotypes. Let's look at the models for the two-way admixture. So it looks like 50% this plus 50% this ends up being quite close to her, followed by 50% this, 50% this. What's the difference between these two models, actually? I think the difference is that um, the top is a little bit lighter here. Am I tripping? I think the top is a little bit lighter than he than here on the on the right. I don't even remember what the difference is here because there there is like tiny minor differences in the phenotypes, uh, like slightly different hair shade or slightly different uh, skin shade or curly hair sometimes instead of straight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Now let's see what she scores for the. Biomarkers panel and then polygenic risk scores. So for the biomarkers panel, it looks like she's got a above average level of vitamin D, really good to see. Uh, above average level of LDL cholesterol, which is not good to see. Below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is uh, also not good to see. Uh, above average level of glucose, which is once again unfortunate. Uh, average level of hemoglobin, all right, that's pretty typical. Average blood pressure, once again, pretty typical. And average level of iron in blood. Once again, pretty typical stuff. Let's look at her polygenic risk scores. So it looks like she's got a significantly higher than average odds of myopia. It looks like she's got an average odds of primary biliary cirrhosis and average odds of stroke. She's got a slightly above average odds for male pattern hair loss, which is not surprising because she's a European. Europeans tend to have higher odds for that. She's got a slightly below average odds of atrial fibrillation. Uh, nothing relevant was found for deep vein thrombosis. Slightly below average odds for bipolar type 1. Average odds for schizophrenia. Slightly above average odds for type 2 diabetes. Actually, that's the highest thing she scores, the, high, the type 2 diabetes risk score. Okay, so that's interesting. She's got a slightly below average odds of Alzheimer's. She's got a high risk score for multiple sclerosis as well. All right, so multiple sclerosis and type 2 diabetes are the things that she scores high for. Uh, two risk variants for breast cancer out of 14, which is kind of typical, really typical. Eight risk variants for testicular cancer out of 14, pretty typical as well. One risk variant for celiac disease out of 10, which is pretty typical as well. Nothing relevant. Actually, no risk variants for GSS, 0 out of 6, really good to see. Uh, six risk variants for Crohn's disease out of 22, which is kind of typical. Uh, no risk variants for Raffensteins, but nothing was found either. Two risk variants for Parkinson's, okay. So her only real concerns are the... Um, uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and multiple sclerosis based on, based on this result. All right, so let's check. Let's go through the um, through this and discuss some of the things that I think might be interesting here. Uh, she's got Vodier genotype in COMT and Vodier genotype in MAOA, so she's definitely very Vodier, uh, higher dopamine levels and certain advantages in memory and attention tasks disadvantages and stress-related situations. Um, that's very interesting. She also has the A allele and TAC1. So she's got A1 allele and TAC1, uh, kind of uncommon as well, which leads to a decreased number of dopamine due to receptor sites in the brain. And this kind of would have a sort of like an inverse effect in terms of her, um, the way she behaves. It would have an infer inverse effect from the her genotype in COMT and MAOA. So she's got a little bit more dopamine, but she's got less of the D2 dopamine receptors. So that's pretty interesting. And um, she actually has long form 5 HTTLPR. That's quite interesting. So she's, she's got this rare genotype, which leads to long form 5 HTTLPR and significantly lower risk of depression. That's really good to see. Um, she does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. For OXTR and empathy gene, it looks like she's got. Some genotypes for uh, increased OXTR, OXTR expression, but then she also has some genotypes for decreased OXTR expression, which is very interesting. So she's probably not a sociopath, but also not very empathetic. But of course, there's other stuff that plays a role in how empathetic you are. Uh, like OXTR and oxytocin, it plays a little bit of a role, but there's also like literally your choices and your life experiences, all that stuff. 
So you can just say somebody is a sociopath by their genotype in OXTR. It's kind of silly. But I do anyway. Um, for hemochromatosis, she's not a carrier for the C282Y hemochromatosis mutation. Really good to see. Uh, multiple sclerosis, she's an HLA DRB1 carrier. All right, so that's definitely very interesting. So she's got this genotype in, in HLA gene, which um, corresponds with a significantly higher risk of multiple sclerosis. Very unfortunate. Uh, myopia panel, we're going to skip that. Facial morphology panel. This is just something that funny that I added, like literally yesterday. Um, I'm going to keep adding stuff to it because, I don't know, it's just funny. I made the, I, I drew the picture myself, by the way. <laughs> But yeah, she's got a European genotype in EDAR, so she doesn't have the East Asian genotype in EDAR. Uh, she's got AG here in POX3, which means intermediate odds of protruding nasal bridge. The ALE increases the odds of protruding nasal, nasal bridge. She's got CC here, which leads to larger nose size. And she's got CC here, which means she likely has the mandibular third moral, molar. Uh, so this is one of those genotypes that has to do with uh, whether or not you have missing teeth. And she doesn't have any missing teeth. It looks like she does not have a micropenis. Really good to see. Um, and no East Asian EDAR. All right. Okay, so for the drug response, is there anything I want to talk about here? Um, no, not really. I don't really want to talk about this. Any, anything here? Uh, MCHFR panel. Um, no, I don't really want to talk about this either. Cancer panel. I don't want to talk about that. Leukemia. Too boring. Too boring. Selectivity is way too boring. Male pattern hair loss. Okay, so she's got AG here, which leads to decreased risk of baldness. And A is the protective allele. All right, so she actually has the protective allele in, in this variation. It's an AR gene. Uh, protective allele from balding, which is really good to see. Um, she's got some other genotypes that also protect from balding, but she also has this this variation right here, which leads to intermediate likelihood of male pattern baldness. All right. Um, of course, she's not going to be going bald because she's a female, but if she has like a son, uh, a lot of these balding related variations are on the X, so her son is going to get her, uh, her, you know, her son is going to get her predispositions, put it this way. Muscular dystrophy myopathies, we're going to... Uh, I don't see anything. No, no risk variants for that. Color blindness panel, one risk variant in OPN1SW. Pretty common. I see that pretty frequently. Zero risk variants in OPN1MW, and nothing was found for OPN1LW. Uh, not a very high quality file, unfortunately. She has some genotypes that increase BMI and predispose her to obesity. Very interesting. Uh, nothing relevant was found for syncope. Uh, bio trades panel. Is there anything we want to talk about? Nah, not really. Not really. And for blood group, it looks like she's her blood type is type A. Very interesting. So she's she's definitely got type A blood type. Kind of uncommon. Uh, most commonly, you see type O. And in her case, she's got type A. Definitely type A. Definitely no other, no other blood type. All right. Well, that's pretty much all there is for this individual. Thanks for watching my video until the very end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And of course, uh, I want to remind you that you can download this file in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description of the video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.